Good afternoon, everyone. I know it's been a while since I've put together any content. Last time I was here, I put together a three-part series about my uh, Victron inverter setup and Battleborn battery bank and things like that in my reflection fifth wheel. I'll put a link to that three-part series uh, in the description below. But uh, today we're here with this little R-Pod in the background. And um, what we're going to be doing on that is another Victron install. Slightly smaller battery bank. We're going to do two GC3s instead of three like I did in my rig. And uh, basically we're going to be working with a different inverter this time. Since that's a 30 amp RV, we're basically going to be doing a slightly different setup. So instead of two 50 amp legs, we've got a single 30 amp leg to feed uh, this RV. We're still going to have a 3000 VA inverter and uh, should be plenty of power for that little rig. So we'll start out doing a quick walkthrough here. We've got, uh, basically, we've got our 30 amp power supply coming in. It's right here. It's our standard little RV uh, 30 amp plug. I've already started to take things apart here. It's just a screw on for the RV connector coming in. We're gonna be disconnecting that Romex feeding into the power center. And we're gonna be pulling a new wire in. Basically, it's gonna go straight to the inverter, just like how the original wire did on mine that I had to lengthen. So in the case of this one, we're going to go inside here. And we've got our power center already kind of taken apart here. There's the new inverter. It's the 3000 VA, 120 amp, 12 volt. And um, what we're going to basically end up doing is we're going to go into this power center. We're going to take the existing wire. We're going to pull it back and... Um, pull through a new one so that we can run that direct to the inverter. Then we're going to run one from the inverter back to here. So if this original one is long enough, we'll run it to the inverter, depending on where we're going to put it. Right now we're trying to uh, basically keep the weight up front. We've got some space up here um, underneath the, uh, the original bed layout. Uh, the previous owner had a small inverter, uh, or the, the owner rather, has a small inverter. Uh, they were using to charge phones and things like that. That will no longer be needed once we're done here. So basically everything is going to go underneath here. We're going to open up these panels here in a little bit. We'll show you what's going on in there. We've got an easy routing path uh, to come underneath these panels and then um, work our way under the bathroom shower door uh, right there and then over to the power distribution center. So uh, we're going to get to the install on this one here, uh, on this little rig. This one does have solar right now. Uh, they're currently using a GoPower um, controller, charge controller. We're going to put in some Victron MPPT uh, solar charge controllers. We're actually going to do two of them on this install. The reason for that being is we've got a solar bank on the roof. And we also are going to have a setup for a portable... Uh, suitcase type solar setup that can plug into another external location on this RV. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started with taking things apart and then uh, we'll we'll kind of get into this. All right, it's a new day. I've gotten everything painstakingly taken apart on the interior of this RV. I had to uh, be real careful pulling some panels apart. They're held by staples to get access to screws to remove things. So had to be real careful. I've started kind of laying some things out as an initial design and uh, we're trying not to lose a lot of storage space. Um, I've got one access door externally over here. We're going to put the inverter over on this side. Um, this is basically like a pass-through storage. Um, we've got another access door over here and then uh, there's more storage underneath this panel here. <clears throat> so what we've done is we're uh, we're basically trying to allow the user to ventilate this compartment where the batteries and inverter are because the inverter does get pretty hot when it's charging the batteries and inverting. It has its own fan, but it's not ideal that it's laying on its back. It's better to have them mounted upright uh, vertically on a wall. In the case of this little RV, we don't have that opportunity, so we're uh, making do with what we can. So. This allows the user to open both compartment doors to get some cross ventilation. And um, we've, uh, we've already started to run the Romex wiring. This is again a 30 amp RV. So we've got just some 10 2 
Romex is all we're using. That's what actually supplies this whole RV with power. So as we take a step back over here, <coughs> the, uh, I've accessed some other panels underneath here under the uh, slide out. As you can see, this is where the power comes in to the RV. This is where the 30 amp connector is on the outside. I've already disconnected that, pulled it out, pulled the old wire out of it, and then used that to basically fish through a brand new wire. So this, this Romex that you're looking at here is actually a brand new wire. Uh, it, it runs over to here, goes under the floor, and then basically over to the other side where the power center is. So we've got our power center here. <clears throat> I apologize for the video being messed up a little bit there. We've got our power center here. This is the original 30 amp Romex that supplied power to the breaker panel, basically. Um, this is the main 30 amp breaker right here for the whole RV, air conditioning, water heaters and other stuff. <clears throat> the converter is built into this unit. Uh, this is the breaker for it. It will basically be turned off permanently from now on. We don't need the internal converter in here because we don't want to make a charging loop because the inverter will provide 110 volt power and then this converter would basically be trying to provide 12 volt power to keep the battery charged, but the battery doesn't need to be charged from the inverter it creates a charging loop so you're actually basically just creating heat burning down your batteries um, or depleting your batteries rather and um, causing a charging loop so that's why we turn this off we won't turn that back on again so in here we've got um, basically the the hole in the floor down in there um, where we basically the Romex came up through we've uh, routed it Underneath uh, the bathroom, it basically goes, uh, this is basically like a wet bath. It's a shower, <coughs> shower and toilet. The Romex actually runs underneath that. And then uh, it comes through this panel here where this, this wood is. Um, and then you can see them coming this way. Now the original Romex um, that we have right here, this is all the longer that it was. So we're going to use this box here to make a junction to extend that the rest of the way to the inverter. Now we probably could have placed the inverter over on this side and not needed to do that. However, uh, we would be losing uh, a lot of storage space on the side where we have our largest bay door. This bay door is much larger and much more practical to use than the one that's over here on the other side. So. Some thought was put into it. Uh, again, this one's much smaller. <clears throat> so we'd rather give up space that's usable on this side. Uh, they can still put maybe a sewer hose, um, some gloves, things like that over here uh, and not disturb the inverter. So there's still a little bit of room there. Uh, we're gonna be adding a, uh, a master uh, cutoff switch. That's what uh, this one is. It's a much larger version of that switch and uh, it's gonna be right next to it. That one will cut power to the batteries uh, for everything. It's basically just an emergency backup. The, uh, this smaller cutoff switch, uh, there's some thicker wires that are going to it. There was an inverter used previously. You can see those wires here are no longer connected. Uh, those will be uh, removed and abandoned uh, as we do this install. So we still have a little bit of cleanup of some old wiring to get rid of. Uh, we are going to keep the original uh, RV 12-volt uh, wiring that supplies uh, the bus bars that were in place already uh, for the things like lighting and the refrigerator and things like that. So we're going to keep the existing factory wiring in place. I always try to disturb that as little as possible. I don't want to create any issues. <coughs> the final aspect of this install uh, that we'll get into is they are going to put an MPPT controller in here instead of this. Um, we have uh, basically a Go Power uh, 30 amp PWM controller. Uh, it's, it was on the wall right up here. And uh, so what we're going to do is these wires coming down from the solar panels on the roof uh, go into this controller. And then uh, these wires here go down through the wall. Uh, down under the shower to the uh, existing 
power distribution center over there, but they don't actually go to the power distribution center. They actually go through the floor and, uh, and then they go outside the RV to a bus bar up near the front batteries. So I'm going to basically get rid of that. And instead of this wire running down and outside the RV, it's going to stay inside and we're basically going to pull it uh, through you know, where it comes down the wall into this, this storage area here. And then we will probably put the MPPT controller somewhere up in here. Um, so we haven't quite figured out exactly where that's going to be. We may put it up on that front wall. Um, you know, we're, we're not quite sure yet. <clears throat> the, uh, the Lynx distributor that you see sitting on top of the battery here, um, it's going to be mounted on the wall, probably right about there. Um, and then uh, again, once we get rid of some of that, that larger, uh, wiring that, that came in that ran straight to the batteries up on the tongue, um, for a, a smaller inverter that used to be in here, um, we'll get all that cleaned up and then be able to have that mounted there. So that's our game plan. Um, we're going to start getting some things actually attached to the walls today. Uh, sorry, I don't really take videos while I'm doing work. But uh, we will go into some, some in-depth stuff once we get things uh, moving along. Now we've got uh, our battery packs in place. Got our batteries there. We got the inverter. Start mounting a few things to the wall. We've got over here the uh, solar controller, MPPT controller. We're going to add wiring over to that from, uh, to, from the existing drop coming in from the ceiling. Here we've got our Lynx distributor. We've got the original uh, cutoff switch that was put in place by the uh, by the owner. They say to cut off all the stock 12 volt supply to the RV. We've got the uh, the backing plate mounted already uh, with some some screws in there for a much larger master cutoff that will basically shut off all power uh, to everything uh, from the batteries. So from the battery bank, we're going to be going to uh, a 400 amp T fuse that we've got in place here. It'll go over to the master cutoff switch and then come back to our Lynx distributor uh, that's that's right there. We've also got uh, down here, we've got the, the smart shunt that's in place. We uh, put a little box in here for a splice that we did from the original Romex and uh, basically extending that from the power distribution panel over to the inverter. So we've already got the inverter cabled up. We're gonna tidy up some of these wires uh, later on and actually attach them uh, with some cable ties and things like that. Uh, this is uh, this other cable down here uh, that you see at the bottom. That's a brand new one that we ran underneath the floor um, in from the they see the plug that comes in from your shore power on the side. We've also, uh, while, while uh, I was working over the weekend, I went and got the, uh, the Touch 50 display installed. Uh, this is going to be for the Servo GX control panel. Uh, so anyways, we've got, got everything coming along nicely. We've got basically, uh, you know, everything's ready to go. I've got ordered some uh, four rock cables for the inverter and for the batteries. This is just one that I had uh, left over from my project. So I was using it to test bend radiuses and things like that, radii, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, so I've got that, using that to mock up and uh, measure lengths for having all these custom cables made. I use a company called uh, batterycablesusa.com for ordering the cables. They've got extremely good service, very fast. You can tell them exactly what length you need, exactly what connectors you want on the cable. They come nicely sealed, uh, heat shrinked, everything. And uh, it just eliminates the risk of having a bad crimp when you are dealing with such high amperages. You know, we're talking 400 amp fuses on this setup. We need wire that can keep up with that. And any bad crimps will just create heat and uh, potential failure uh, and fires risk and things like that. So I like to avoid having those concerns. So that's uh, why I've got those on order now. I got about $200 worth of 4 odd cables uh, already pre-made up on their way. So those will be installed next. So that's going to be our next little 
uh, shoot on this video. But for now, this is where we're at. Uh, I got the inverter actually mounted. It's attached to the floor. May have to take it up depending on uh, uh, you know what I need to do on connecting additional wiring, but I think we're good to go on that. I should be able to slip the four out wires in uh, through the the bottom bottom part of the panel, kind of up here, um, as as it uh, as we hook everything up. So uh, next, the the Servo GX is actually going to go on the wall, probably just to the right of the MPPT controller right there. Um, just to kind of keep everything in one central location. I do need to extend the HDMI and USB power cable. Um, the HDMI handles the data for this, the, what's displayed on the screen as well as the response back for your touch commands. Um, you see all the pixels that are red when you touch it. Um, so all of that will need to get extended. Uh, so basically that the cable for the, the touch screen has already been run down this wall. Uh, it's actually sitting in this panel over here, kind of along this wall right now. Um, so it's just unfortunately too short. And I'd rather put the Servo GX over here near the battery bank so that uh, I don't have to run as long of a VE Direct cable and run a whole bunch of them because we've got one VE Direct cable that's going to be going to the solar controller. We have one that's going to the inverter and we have one that will be going to the smart shunt. So uh, we have quite a bit of data cables for the Victron network that are going to be running all over the place and we want to make sure that uh, we're not having to run too many of those. So we'll just extend the touch screen uh, power and data cables and then call it good. Uh, we're also going to be adding some temperature sensors to the setup. Uh, so the Servo GX will be uh, taking readings from several sensors. We're going to put one probably in this battery uh, compartment, if you will. We're going to put it close to the inverter because it does create quite a bit of heat when charging and discharging. So uh, we'll, the user will be able to monitor uh, that and find out, you know, if things are getting too hot, they can open up these, these uh, access doors to the outside, get some cross ventilation, get some heat out of here, things like that. Uh, they'll also have one uh, inside the cabin since right now their, their thermostat doesn't really display uh, the the inside temperature very well of their of their RVs. They've just got the basic Dometic one here that controls their uh, their uh, air conditioning. So they're uh, they'll have an actual readout to tell them what the temperature is inside their rig. And then uh, in addition to that, they'll have one outdoors. So they know what they're what they're waking up to outside for the day. Nothing's connected right now, but um, it's powered on. The extension cable works. You can get to the menus. I plugged in one temperature sensor. I've updated all the firmware, uh, so it actually now reads Fahrenheit correctly, um, which I also updated mine as well. Uh, now that I know that it works. Um, anyway, it's getting there. It's just sitting on top of the battery, and I'm I've connected the wire directly to the battery for now to power it up. Also made a custom cable for the Servo GX to talk to the inverter on the uh, VE bus connection. So now when we go down here to AC mode, we can turn it on, which will turn on the inverter. There we go. So sorry for not recording a lot during the installation process. It's a lot of work, but um, skipping right along to our, our pretty much finished project. <clears throat> we've got our final installation with the inverter down here we've got uh, of course our, our master cutoff switch the original cutoff switch we've got our t-fuse uh, we've got our Lynx distributor up here we've got our new mppt solar controller which replaced a uh, pwm controller pulse width modulation controller that used to be up on the wall right here. Uh, the owner of the RV is gonna put a, a picture frame or something to cover up this hole that was left from removing the old one. We took the, uh, the original solar wires that came down from the, the roof and, and spliced them together, uh, basically where the, the PWM controller had the two wires coming in from the roof and then two wires going out uh, to the original battery bank. We, uh, we spliced those together and then uh, ran it uh, over here. I went ahead and added their typical outdoor solar, uh, I guess, quick disconnects here. 
Um, so that wire actually comes to that point and then uh, goes to the MPPT controller. It's been added to the Victron system. Everything communicates through the Serbo GX, which you can see on the right. Uh, we still have our, our two Game Changer 3 Battleborn batteries for a total of 540 amp hours. That's going to be a significant amount of power in this little uh, R-Pod uh, trailer that we've got here. So uh, not a lot of electrical loads. There's uh, you know microwave and, and refrigerator and things like that, but um, not a lot of huge electrical demands, TV, things like that. So I think this will be a pretty good setup. Now with the solar, <clears throat> the owner has added some solar to this. It's got almost 500 watts on the roof. Uh, with those quick disconnect T-fittings, we've got, um, uh, there we can see our, even though it's a very cloudy day right now, we've got 73 watts coming in uh, solar right now. Um, so anyways, we've got a little portable suitcase solar system here. Uh, what I've done is, is there's an Anderson uh, quick connect right here that'll be used to plug in an extension cable. I've got that going to the standard, again, the outdoor quick connects like you'd see on the roof of a solar installation. Those wires run along the wall back there, uh, and then they tee in to the ones that come down from the roof. So these, these wires here come up from the, the roof, go into here. We've got the ones that come from the, the Anderson quick connect uh, right here next to it. Uh, which is these that are looped over and then it basically feeds right into the MPPT controller. So essentially when you plug in the the little suitcase it ends up being uh, in parallel with what is on the roof of the RV. So uh, you can basically just kind of boost the output and you, the other day I had that uh, again a cloudy rainy drizzly day I just set up the suitcase angled just like leaning against the side of the trailer and it was pulling in you know 10 watts or whatever at you know bad angle my garage is just on the side here uh, so it really wasn't getting much sun but when I plugged it into what was already coming in from the roof it did increase the wattage coming in so uh, it's going to be a great little addition if the RV is parked under some shade you'll be able to add the suitcase and then have that pointed wherever you want uh, so again, we still have the, the Touch 50 display from the, uh, uh, you know, working with the Servo GX here. And uh, again, you know, we've, we've got everything all, all centralized here. You can control your, your inverter settings and all of that. Uh, it's in charger only mode right now, which we're not connected to shore power. Uh, we can turn on the inverter and, and do all of our changes from here. We can also set our current limits and things like that. <clears throat> now this RV is only a 30 amp. Uh, single pole setup so you never need to go more than 30 amps there and um, basically the the main breaker that uh, feeds the power distribution panel is only a 30 amp breaker for coming from the multi uh, multi plus inverter so you can never use more than 30 amps anyway even if you cranked it up to 40 or 50 and you allow the inverter to supplement what's coming in from shore power, eventually you're going to pop your own circuit breaker inside your power distribution panel if you try to use more than 30 amps. So, um, you know, it's got all the proper safety precautions. Even if you did turn that up to 50, um, you, you can't really hurt anything. There's, there's protections along the way. So it's a really clean setup. Uh, they did lose uh, about two-thirds of their pass-through storage bay here we probably could have gotten some different batteries that were a little bit more compact uh, power dense but these J game changer threes are really good batteries they seem to be pretty robust uh, great solid case that they're in and everything else so uh, anyways still have storage space we actually gain some storage space on the tongue of the trailer um, so when we we basically go outside uh, we can take a quick quick step out here and uh, as we, we look at, at uh, what's going on on the tongue of the trailer, we now have some storage space here where the, uh, the battery boxes used to be. We can now go ahead and uh, you know have, have them fabricate a uh, like a storage tray or a, a weatherproof box or something like that to put there. So um, just some, some kind of neat ideas. Uh, they, they may have lost some interior space but gained a little bit of exterior space. So not a bad setup for a uh you know for a small little r pod it's uh 
you know, cute little rig for having that much flexibility to go off grid and, and boondock. So hope you guys enjoyed this. If you are in South Central Texas area and you you want uh, want to learn more about this, please uh, you know, reach out to me. And you know, I'm I'm basically at the point where I'll do these installs for folks at this point. And um, you know if uh, if it's something that you're looking forward to, let me know. Thanks everyone.